Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his affliction. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassion from my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done so. Before thee, if thou mightest be justified in thy yours, and prevail on our judge. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and it sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou art true, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom is not only manifested to me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made white as the snow. Thou shalt make me deep with joy and gladness. The bones of the humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart of God, and renew the red spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. But restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and let thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto me. For the Lord from blood, the day of God, and the God of my salvation, and the Lord from my righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For thou hast desired sacrifice, and I have given it. With over offerings, I shall not be pleased to sacrifice to God as a broken spirit. A heart that is broken, and humble, shall not despise. To go to Lord in thy good pleasure, and to sigh out of the walls of Jerusalem be good. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and open offerings. Then shall they offer bullets upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the age of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The stone had been thrown by the Jews and the soldiers regarding that immaculate body, that its arrival on the third day of the Savior, granting life unto the world. Wherefore the host of the heavens cried out to the elect giver, Glory to thy resurrection, O Christ, glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy dispensation, O holy lover of mankind, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Having learned goodness and been watchful in all things, made, as befitted the priest of the conscience. Let us draw forth ineffable things from the chosen vessel, and having kept the faith, thou didst complete the course like this, like this, O Hiramar Dionysius, the tree of God, that our souls be saved, both now and ever and unto thee, and to the age of men. Fulfill the book of the tree of God, and have lost the world for us to prove his life. We will be supplicated to see the lady together with the holy apostles that our souls find mercy. Blessed is the Lord God, blessed is the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation shall prosper us along the way. Our God is the God of salvation. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, and who God our sins, and master of all of our good deeds. O holy Father, and to the Holy Spirit, and to the Holy Spirit, and to the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heaven, hallowed be thy day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. As God, let us arise from the sin and glory, and let us raise the world together with thyself. In mortal nature, praise be to God, and God is held. And Adam danceth, O Master, and Eve, not great from brothers, rejoiceth, and shall cry of hell. Thou art he, O Christ, that grantest unto all resurrection. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth are worshipped and glorified of Christ God, who art on suffering, but peace and mercy, most compassionate, who loves the righteous and has mercy on sinners, who call us all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, our birth of this hour and God alive to thy commandments. 
Sanctify our souls, we raise our bodies, erect our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us about the little angels that guard and defend our very race. We may attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the unapproachable glory. Blessed art thou unto the angels and angels of men. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of angels of men. More honorable than the children of men, and they may have the firm glorious and the set of being. Do it out for us, and give us the birth of God the Word, the very day of the King we magnify. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Amen. O Master God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, one God, have one power, have one mercy, and be a sinner by the judgments which thou knowest. Save me, thine own way, servant. Blessed art thou to the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> o come, let us worship God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself our King and God. O oh God, in my name, save me, and I strength to thou touch me, O oh God, hearken unto my prayer, give ear unto the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and mighty men are sought after my soul, and not say God be for themselves. For behold, God helpeth me, and the Lord is the protector of my soul. He will bring evils upon mine enemies, utterly destroy them by thy truth. Willingly shall I sacrifice unto thee, I will confess thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Proud of every affliction, has thou delivered me, and my eyes look down upon mine enemies. Give ear, O God, unto my prayer, and stand up my supplication, and stand unto me, and hear me. I will pray unto my meditation, and I the voice of the enemy, and the oppression of the sinner. Because they have turned iniquity upon me, and with wrath were they angry against me. My heart is troubled within me, and the terror of death has fallen upon me. Fear and gently have come upon me, and darkness have covered me, and I said, I will give me like a dog, and I will fly and be at rest. So I have let far off, and I dwelt in the wilderness, and waited for God, and save me from faint heartedness and contemplation. Runs into the depths of the Lord and divide their thoughts, where I see many who he gains in the city. Day and night they go round about her upon her walls, and they can see his and her righteousness are in the midst of her. And usually in the sea that I departed from her street, it spread my enemy and revile me, I might have endured it. And if he that hated me and spoke in his words against me, I might have killed myself from him. Thou art most a man of my soul with me, my God, and my familiar friend. I will be good with me to speak in my repast, in the house of God, I have watched with thee, wondrous and mind. Let death come upon such ones, and let them down life and the The wickedness is in their dwellings and in the midst of them. As for, God, as for me, unto God have I cried, and the Lord hearken unto me. Evening, morning, and noonday will I tell of it, and will declare it, and you will hear my voice. He will redeem my soul in peace from them that draw nigh to me, for they among many will with me. God will hear, and he will humble them, and he that is before the angels. Or to them, there is no criminal, because they have not feared God. He has been before his hand in retribution, and they have defiled his covenant, and they were scattered by the wrath of his countenance, and their hearts have been made. The words are smoother than oil, and yet they are dogs. Cast thy care upon the Lord, and he will nourish thee, he will never permit the righteous to be shaken. But thou, O God, shall bring those men down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out of their days, but as for me, O Lord, I will open thee. He that dwelleth in the house of the most high, and shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou art my helper and my refuge. He is my God, and I will open him. He shall live beneath the snare of the hunters. From every troubling word, he shall be in every shadow of thee. And under his wings shall not have hope. For the shield will she doesn't come to thee, that shall not be afraid for the terror of thy night, nor for the air that flies by day, nor for the thing that walketh in darkness, nor for the mishap and evil of the day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand for thy right hand shall be thee, shall not to God. Only with thy life shall thou be born, and thou shalt see the reward of sinners. Thou, O Lord of my hope, thou madest the most high thy refuge. No evil shall come thy, come to thee. In the spirit of God, thy dwelling is. You shall give an angel's charge to thee to keep thee on all thy ways, and on thy hands shall bear thee up. A city be found not there, but against the stone. Upon the ass and the basket shall not tread, and not to trample upon the body of the dragon. For he set his upon me, and I will deliver him, and I will shelter him, because he has known my name. He shall cry unto me, and I will hearken unto him, and I will become an affliction, and I will rescue him, and glorify him. In the end of days will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to the Father, alleluia, 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 glory to the Holy Spirit.
Now at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth we worship and glorify the Christ God, who are only suffering, plenteous and mercy, most compassionate, who loves the righteous and his mercy on sinners, who call us all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and God our life to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, may chase our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Now this is about that for the angels, the guard of the by their array, who may attain to the age of the and to the knowledge of them, and the glory, for blessed are thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, in mercy, Lord, in mercy, Lord, in mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and be unto the more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption gave his birth to God the Word, the very death of the seed, and we magnify in the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Amen. O God, and Lord of hosts, the maker of all creation, who by the tender compassion of thy mercy, which transcended comprehension, did send down thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the salvation of our race and by his precious cross that tear us under and tear us under the handwriting of our sins and thereby his triumph over the principalities and the powers of darkness. Do thou thyself, O Master, of our mankind, accept also from us sinners these prayers of thanksgiving and entreaty, and deliver us from every destructive and dark transgression and from all enemies, both visible and invisible, that seek to do us evil. Sell down our flesh with the fear of thee and incline our hearts with the words of all to be evil. But pierce our souls who are longing for thee, so that ever looking unto thee and being guided by thy life, as we behold thee, the unapproachable and everlasting life, we may send a month ceasing praise and thanksgiving unto thee, the unoriginate Father, with thine only begotten Son, and thine holy and good and life creating Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. 
thy sufferings and glorify their resurrection. And I cry out the spirit voice, when the new Lord and thou comest in thy kingdom. Remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Raising up the temple of thy body by thy resurrection on the third day of Christ God, God its raised up Adam and his descendants who cry. Remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called sons of God. Very early the murdering women arrived, weeping as I teeth to O Christ God. And they found an angel sitting there, clad in white garments, who said, What seek ye? Christ is risen, live no longer. Blessed are we that are recipient for righteousness' sake. For this is the kingdom of heaven. And thine apostles went to the mountain whither thou hadst commanded them to go. Saw thee, O Savior, they worship thee. And thou didst send them unto the nations to teach and to baptize them. Blessed are the men that shall be by the red and shall say all manner of evil against you mostly for my sake. Having passed above the heavenly ranks, armies, and splendors of the circles of heaven, O Father, with loudly, with loudly proclaimed discourses and most wise teachings, thou hast explained them to all. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in the Vision of Venerable One as a theologian of the Trinity through grace. Thou hast set forth the theology of the divine understanding of the names of God. O divinely blessed Dionysius. O Having studied philosophy and history, O Father, thou hast become a God bearing instrument of light bearing gifts which pass understanding. Through the activity of the all accomplishing Spirit, O Virgin, thou dost bring forth as fruit the body of the Master of all, in whom the world of sin hath been condemned. An everlasting life hath poured forth. Wisdom,
either is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might fill after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, but we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, or silver, or stone, graven by art and man's devices. In the times of this ignorance God moved death, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, and whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he raised him, raised, hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, how be a certain men clave unto him, and believed among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Demaris, and others with them. And to thy spirit with them. Hallelujah, in the first song, O God, who gave us the benjamin unto me, and has subdued peoples under me. Went and sold all that he had and bought it. 
I am the kingdom of heaven, as like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus says unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. Glory to the Lord. religious. 
And the King James actually translates that as saying, you are, very, you are too superstitious. Both translations are possible, but it's not likely that St. Paul would have began a discussion to a bunch of uh, non-Christians by insulting them. And it's more commonly, the word that was used there would just mean that you're a very religious people. You, you, I, can, I can look around and see that, that uh, your religion means something to you. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Who therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. What's interesting about this, this image that they worship, or actually this, this altar and that inscription and that image, was around 600 years prior to this time, there was a plague that was devastating the city of Athens. And all the pagan priests were offering sacrifices to the various gods that they knew. And it did not let up. And finally, a Greek poet by the name of Epimenides said, There must be an unknown God that we've offended. So let's offer sacrifice to him. So they offered sacrifice to the unknown God, and the plague stopped. And what this goes to show is that God never left anybody without a witness. They all had the witness of creation. And God revealed himself to people even before they heard the gospel. But this was a way of preparing people for the gospel. And we're told that even the Greek philosophers in many ways prepared the Greek world for the gospel because they had thought about a lot of the truths of the universe and came to certain insights that made them a little bit more open to the gospel than their ancestors put it. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he give to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds in their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, Happily, if happily, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any of us, any one of us. So what St. Paul is saying is, is that God doesn't need anything. This, the, the pagans always thought they could bribe the gods into doing things. God doesn't need anything from us. We do worship God. But we worship God as Christians, knowing that God doesn't need anything from us, but only because we, as creatures, ought to worship God. And St. Paul says that all men are of one blood. All the Gentiles come from the same origin as the, as the Israelites do, and God was trying to reach them all these many centuries as well. And he, he cared for them, he loved them, he wasn't far from them. And he was now revealing himself to them. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. So St. Paul even quoted. Greek philosophers of the sermon, what we see here is, is, is how you engage people who are not already Christians. You take the good things that they already know and you, you go from there. There's a, in every culture that you'll find on the face of the earth, there's some, something in that culture that is a doorway for them to understand the gospel. And we have to understand what that is and then try to appeal to that. But we also don't want to go so far as to try to water down the message. St. Paul says in his epistles that the cross of Christ is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Now, if he had consulted with church growth experts, they probably would have said, well, don't talk much about the cross up front. Don't talk about the resurrection because the Greeks don't believe in the resurrection. Focus on all this stuff about you know, how we're all one nation and we live through and have our being. That's the kind of stuff that will appeal to them. But St. Paul didn't stop there. He, he 
He wasn't going to try to get people to accept the faith by changing it. He was going to pass on the faith as it was, whether they accepted it or not. He concludes his sermon with this. He says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath also given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of, of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit how certain men played unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Demaris, and others with him. Listen, as soon as St. Paul began to talk about the resurrection and the final judgment, which is something that the Greeks had no concept of, that's when these people stopped listening. At least a lot of them. But that didn't stop St. Paul from telling them what the truth was. Because the truth is the truth whether people want to accept it or not. And there were some people who opened up their hearts. And among them was St. Dionysius the Areopagite, whose memory we celebrate today. And we know from tradition that St. Dionysius, who was a philosopher that had all the knowledge of the Greeks, embraced the faith, and he took the good things that he had learned before he encountered Christianity, and he was able to explain many deep mysteries of the faith. And so we have his writings that we very highly treasure. And he sealed his confession of the faith with his own blood. In the Gospel reading, it's appointed for his feast, we hear about the, the treasure that's found in the field and the pearl of great price and how when you find something that is beyond the value of anything else, you sell everything you have and you buy it because you found this great treasure. The saint Dionysius gave his own life because he found that treasure. He gave his life in exchange for that pearl of great price. And if we preach the Gospel with boldness, we don't water it down, but we do try to Point people to the things that they already know and to lead them from what they already know to the things that they don't know. Many around us will be saved as well. Patriarchs, 
For by us kings and right ruling queen, grant for the followers of this holy temple, and for our fathers and brethren born to their rest before us, and on the road of our year and every day of two births. Thy grace and compassion, have mercy on my servants. Sunday, good Romanos, Monica, Glamazra, Olga, Sendia, Kiriakos, and the Lord of Heaven, Justina, Justina, Rachel, and the Kings. Go fill all their petitions and pardon them all transgressions, voluntary and involuntary. Let their prayers alone be acceptable before the throne of my dominion, and protect them from enemies visible and invisible, from every temptation, harm, and sorrow. And deliver them from the seed and the breath and the love and rest of days. Let us all say, O Lord, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, the author of life and immortality, look down and mercy upon thy mandate. The happiness of Sarah, the death of the church, I cast from this world. Grant unto them strength of soul and body, and deliver them in their time of travail. And as thou inspires from the body of men from the earth, and bestow upon him the gift of life and the grace of thy all Holy Spirit, do thou grant life and power unto all thy children from in the world, that in due time they may become committed in the life of the living God. Through the intercession of thy most pure mother, O giver of life, we pray thee and mark and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. In the condition of souls and bodies with compunction and broken hearts, we fall down before thee, and glory we cry unto thee. Heal the sicknesses, heal the passions of the soul and body of thy servants. Priest Benigno, Jacob Vladimir, Sadiqa Romanos, Presbyter, Christopher Angelina, the Archbishop of Tatiana, Teenager, Victor, Anna, Oleg, Katharina, Georgina, Daniel, Nikolai, Nina, James, Denise, Sophia, Danielle, Mary, Jean, Gregory, Anna, Zoe, Mary, Elena, Nicholas, Alexander, Irene, George, Ganami, Nisan, and Nikolai, and part of them for our hearts, my hearts, and all transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and we quickly raise them up from the bed of sickness. We pray the heart and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Bring them from out of the iniquities and wrongful acts of thy people, O Lord, and do not do judgments and extend not thy wrath upon thy servants. For if thou shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But as thou art compassionate and lovest mankind, be merciful and bring a peaceful end to warfare and killing. Preserve churches and holy things from all harm and defilement, and safeguard thy faithful people from destruction and persecution. <laughs> Diligently we pray in your Lord, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for them that bring offerings and do good works in this holy, low, and rebel temple. For them that minister and them that chant, and for all the people here present. Who awaits a big grace and abundant mercy? Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The earth and our time of love and time, and the use of the glory of the Holy Spirit, now and in the age of the day. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy.
Do thou thyself, O Lord of King, accept the repentance of me, a sinner. And you find that here to me and hearken unto my words. I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am not worthy to look upon the height of thy glory. I have angered thy goodness by transgressing thy commandments and not obeying thine injunction. But thou, O Lord, art not vengeful, but long suffering and plenteous in mercy. For thou hast given me over to be destroyed in my sins, but always thou waitest for my conceit conversion. For thou hast said, O lover of mankind, to thy prophet, for our desire not the death of the sinner, but that he should return to live. For thou desirest not, O Master, to destroy the work of thy hands. He is not that he pleads with the destruction of men. If the desire that all be saved, we may come to a knowledge of the truth. Wherefore, even I, who am unworthy of heaven and earth, of this temple of life, having submitted my whole self to sin, made myself a slave of pleasure, and having defaced that image, being there with the creation, wretched though I be, I despair not of my salvation, and there to approach thy immeasurable loving kindness. Except then even me, O Lord, lover of mankind, as I did accept the sinful woman, the thief, the publican, and the prodigal, to take away the heavy burden of my sin. Now that takes away the sin of the world, and healeth the infirmities of your heart, who pours the very heavy laden unto thyself, and the heavy breast, who gave us not to call the righteous the sinners to repent them. Then do thou cleanse me from all defilement of flesh and spirit, and teach me to achieve holiness in the fear of thee. It was a pure testimony of my conscience, receiving a portion of thy holy things. I may be united unto thy holy body and blood, and have thee living and abiding in me with the Father and thy Holy Spirit. Yea, O Lord Jesus Christ, to my God, let not the communion of thine immaculate and life giving mysteries be unto me for judgment, either unto infirmity of soul and body, because of my partaking of them unworthily, but grant me unto my last breath to receive without condemnation the portion of thy holy things. And to communion with the Holy Spirit, as a provision for life eternal, for an acceptable defense of thy dread judgment seat, so that I also, with all thine elect, may become a partaker of thine incorruptible blessings, which thou hast prepared for them that love thee, O Lord, and whom thou art glorified unto the ages on the heaven. O Lord my God, I know that I am not worthy nor sufficient that thou shouldst enter beneath the roof of the temple of my soul. For all is empty and fall, and with Noah's let me a place worthy to lay thy hold. But as from on high, thou didst humble thyself for our sake. Do thou now also lower thyself to my lowly. And as thou didst consent to lie in a cave and in a manger of dumb beasts, thou consent also to lie in a manger of my irrational soul, and to enter into my defiled body. And as thou didst have refused to enter into dying of sinners in the house of Simon the Leper. The day and all the creatures to the house and let all the soul of the person sent to us. And if thou dost not reject the heart of the sinner like me, who came and touched thee, to be compassionate, all to the whole sinner as I approach and touch thee. For as thou dost feel alone, and for the defilement of the sinner of the bird that kissed thee, do thou also not know my defilement, some in a model of your mouth, and my polluted and unclean tongue. To let the fiery coal of thy most holy body, thy precious blood, be unto me for sanctification and enlightenment, and tell for my holy soul and body, unto the lightning and the burden of my many sins, for preservation from the reality of the the expulsion and prohibition of my evil and wicked habits, unto the mortification of the passions, unto the keeping of thy commandments, unto the application of thy divine grace, unto the acquiring of thy kingdom. For now with disdain do I approach the upright God, that is put upon trusting in thy ineffable goodness, and that I may not by much abstain from thy communion, and become afraid of the spiritual world. Wherefore do I entreat thee, for thou art the whole of thy world, Master, and to have my soul and body, my mind and heart, my belly and inward parts, and renew me entirely, and implant thy fear in my members, and may thy sanctification be inalienable from me, and be unto me a helper and defender. Guide my life in peace. I'll save me out of the sky with thy right hand with thy saints. Through the intercessions and supplications of thy most pure mother, of thy immaterial ministers and immaculate foes, and of all the saints who come the ages of his people to be our men. Holy, pure is in this Lord, through the ineffable compassion of all of mankind, to stick on all of our substance from the pure and broken blood of their divinity, supernaturally through the descent of the divine spirit and the good will of the everlasting Father. O Christ Jesus, wisdom of God, and peace and power, thou who through the assumption of our nature didst take upon thyself, thou art giving a saving passion, the world, the world, the fear, and death, 
and thy precious blood for the remission of my sins. And may this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and at thy death, second coming, God save me, a sinner. To stand at the right hand of thy glory and through the intercessions of thy most pure mother and of all the saints. O most holy lady, the altar was light in my darkened soul, my whole protection, refuge, consolation, my joy. I thank thee that thou hast not saved me, who am unworthy to be a partaker of the most pure body and precious blood of thy son. O oh, thou who gave birth to the true life, to thy life and spiritual eyes of my heart, thou who gave birth to the source of immortality, who died in death and sin. Thou who art the mother of compassion, mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me, and grant me compassion and contrition in my heart, and humility in my thoughts, and recall my thoughts from captivity, and God save me from my last birth, and receive it upon a nation, the sanctification of the most pure mysteries, with the healing of both soul and body, and grant me tears of repentance and confession. With which to him and glorify me all the days of my life. Bless him and glorify the God to the ages of my end. Now let us thou thy servant depart in peace and master according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all peoples, a line of revelation for the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and what have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and what have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and what have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. The Lord, blood on our sins, and master, pardon our iniquities. O holy one, who visited the Lord, for the peace for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, our Lord, which is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Grace shining forth from my mouth, like a beacon that illumines the universe, and is close to the world, traces of my covetousness. And shown us the heights of humility, but all instructing by the word of the Father John Chrysostom, intercede with the word of Christ our God to save our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the heavens has now received divine grace, and by the lips of his people, the word of the Lord of all eternity. O John Chrysostom, my most righteous one, rightly do we acclaim thee, for thou art a teacher of all things divine. Both now and ever, and to the angels of angels, amen. O protection of Christians, I cannot help to shame, O mediation unto the Creator and the Father. Stay not the suffering force of the sin, but be not quick and good. The gospel of the Lord, be for the lady, hasten to intercession, and speed out to my supplication. Thou who is ever protect, O Pale Tokel, send and honor thee. Lord, have mercy, 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 Lord, have mercy.